All right, this is unit five, and unit five is all about right triangles. And we talked about earlier, a right triangle makes a 90 degree angle there in the corner. So this is 5.1 Pythagorean theorem. 5.1 Pythagorean theorem. It's written there on your paper too. 5.1, the Pythagorean Theorem. It seems like when students come to me, they know two things from geometry of their previous experience. Number one, they hate proofs. And number two, the Pythagorean Theorem. Now, they may not know what the Pythagorean Theorem is, but they remember hearing that phrase, the Pythagorean Theorem. Okay, <clears throat> does anyone know why it's called the Pythagorean Theorem? No. There was this guy, he was a big Greek mathematician, and his name was Pythagoras. That's a true story. And so he developed this theorem, and I won't bore you with the history, but this theorem is af named after him. That's where this funky word comes from. It's some guy's name. So if I were to come up with a math formula, it would be the Henryan formula, right? Okay, <clears throat> but I'm not going to do that because, well, anyway, I have other things to do. Okay, so we use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side of a right triangle. It has to be a right triangle. Okay, so you have to see that 90 degrees. You're not allowed to assume that it's 90. You have to see that it's 90. We have these sides A and B over here. A and B are called the legs of the triangle. Side A and B are called the legs. Side C. Does anybody remember what side C is called? We talked about it, I think, two lessons ago. Say that again, Katie. Hypotenuse. Let's go ahead and spell this correctly. H-Y-P. Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. Make yourself a note, please. The hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. It doesn't matter which sides are A and B, just which one is C. So if I look over here at this example, C is called the hypotenuse. Okay, and then does anyone know the Pythagorean Theorem formula? James? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And what do you notice about C? On the other side, it's by itself. C is always the longest side. It's always the side across from the right angle. It's always the hypotenuse, okay? So let's do some practice problems. Find the value of x and round your answer to the nearest tenth. If it says round your answer to the nearest tenth, that means we might be getting decimals, and that's okay. So the first thing that I want you to do before just plugging things in is I would like for you to write your formula down. So at the top there on number one, we're going to write a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then we're going to label our diagram. Which side is, has to be c, Hortensia? The long, the long side. So in example one, which side is uh, the c value? X. X, right? And then a and, uh, a and b are 8 and 13, and it doesn't matter which one is which. So you can just choose A and B. Why doesn't it matter which one is which? Because they're on the same side and you're adding, right? You're on the same side, you're squaring both of them, and you're going to add them together on the same side. All right, so let's use our formula here. 8 squared plus 13 squared, whoops, yeah, equals X squared.
And what is 64 plus 169 here? 233. From algebra, who remembers how we get the squared off of there? Elvis? Take the square root of both sides, right? Because whatever you do on one side of the equation, you have to do on the other. So the square root of 233, I remember it said round to the nearest tenth, so we probably are getting a decimal. Are you guys getting a decimal there? The square root. Guys, on the graphing calculators, I'll show you how to get there. If you hit second and then the x squared key. Okay, so square root from algebra 2. Remember we do the square root, yep. Yes, both of them, because the square root undoes the square. Remember how to do it? You have to, yep, you have to hit second, and then this one. Yep, there you go. What'd you get, Monica? 15.26, but if it says round to the nearest tenth, I'm going to use 15.3. Tenth is one decimal place. Guys, you will be marked incorrect on your homework if you do not follow the rounding directions. Does everyone hear that clearly? If you do not follow rounding directions, you will get the problem wrong. All right, number two. Which one is our C value, Natasha? X is the C value. A and B, it doesn't matter either one. We're going to set up our formula. We're going to use our calculator. Everybody knows there's a squared button, right? And so you don't have to do 27 times 27. The squared button is on the left side where it says x squared. Braxton, what's 27 squared? 729. Talia, what's 22 squared? What? 484. Katie, what do I get when I add them together? 1,213. Equals x squared. Carla, what am I going to do to get x by itself here? Square root. Okay, did you do that already? Um, yes. What'd you get for x? I got 34.82. 34.82, 34 so we're going to round that to what? Uh, Is the 2 big enough to move the 8? Okay. Okay, so what we're looking here when we're rounding, we're talking about rounding and stopping it right here. Okay, so is this 2 big enough to change the 8? No, so it's just going to say 34.8. Okay, let's do uh, number four. Let's hop down and do number four. Monica? You just put 34.8 like this one? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay, go to number four. Hop down to number four for me. On number four, which one is my C value? Courtney? 30.5 is the C value. Does anyone agree with Courtney? Yes. yes. I would.
<clears throat> we getting some big numbers? Okay, Carol, what's 19.1 squared? Do not round these, guys. This is 346 or 364.81. Leave it as that. Your final answer is what you're supposed to round, not in the problem. Did you do 19.1 squared? Try again. Hang on, we're checking again. 19.1 squared? Yeah? Did you get 19.1 squared? Okay, what's 30.5 squared, Monique? 30.5 squared. 930.25. So then you need to be able to change it into this form. Yeah, there you go. Okay, how are we going to solve this for x? What do we need to do here? Subtract. What are you going to subtract, Helia? Do you mean 364 from 930? Okay, we're going to take 364 over to the other side. So I get x squared equals, who wants to figure that out for me? Elvis, you agree with that? Say that one more time, Kara. 565.44. 565.44. Can I get an echo? Donald, you echoing that? Okay, Donald, what do I do to find my final answer? Square root, what is it, Donald? 23.8. Have you already rounded correctly? Yes. Okay. Anybody else agree with 23.8? Good. Okay, let's take it up a notch. Any questions before we take it up a notch? Good. All right, let's keep going. Okay, let's look at, um, let's talk about number five. We're not going to solve number five, but let's talk about number five. Okay, on number five, <clears throat> we have this thing down the middle is giving us a right angle right here. Okay, it's giving us a right angle. They are allowing you to assume that. Um, Anyway, okay, so if we are looking at this, if I wanted to talk about one of these triangles, okay, how long is this guy down here? 11, right, they're both 11. So we can go ahead and write in that this would be 11 here. Which side is going to be my C, Brian? 24. And then X is A and 11 is B. And then I would continue going on. Okay, we're not going to solve this one now. I just wanted to talk about that one. Question. Yeah. Um, like, would the answer, like, since they're both the same thing, uh, would we have to put two answers? No. They just want you to figure out what X is. That's it. Okay? Uh, the, X, the X is basically A. Correct. Yep. And then the other side is going to be 11. Okay. Number six. We're going to create a right triangle out of this because right now this is a trapezoid. So we're going to create a right triangle by doing this. Creating a side that is parallel. Okay. So if the side is parallel then that means that this dotted line is also x and this is a right angle up here right because if we have parallel lines then we know we have corresponding angles there so now my triangle that I'm gonna work with is really this one right here okay but this side is no longer 18 Right, because I cut it off. How are we going to figure out how much that side is? Elvis, what are you thinking? We subtract it by 5. We subtract it by 5, right? Because this is the same measurement as this one. And this was 5 over here. So 18 minus 5 is 13. Which side, the 18 is gone now. 
Which side is going to be my C value, Carla? The, um, 16. 16 is going to be our C value, okay? And then my A would be 13, and my B might be X. So let's go ahead and set it up. We're not going to solve it out, but let's go ahead and set it up so that we can refer back to it if we need to. So I have 13 squared plus X squared equals 16 squared. And I trust now that we've done a few of them that you guys can figure out the math part of this. We're going to skip number seven. Okay, and let's go to the next page. Let's look at number eight. Number eight is a multi-step type of problem. Um, can anyone look at number eight and try to figure out how we're going to start this? Any ideas? James? Okay, so we're not dealing with proportions anymore. We can't do proportions because we don't know that they're similar. Anybody else want to give it a guess? Can you do what? Okay, so you're thinking maybe this one over here is 25? So it's not going to be 25 exactly because, remember, in a right triangle, the longest side is always across from the right angle. <coughs> so, guys, what if I did this? What if I started here? What am I going to call this side that I don't know why? What if I did the Pythagorean theorem with this triangle and figured out what y is? And then I could move into the other triangle to figure out what x is. Does that make sense how we could plan that attack that way? Because I have to know two sides to be able to use a Pythagorean theorem. And the only triangle I know two sides in is that bottom one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's try figuring out what y is. Label your diagram with a y so you know what we're talking about. We said that 25 is going to be our c value. <clears throat> so I have 10 squared plus y squared equals 25 squared. Go ahead and do the math. John, what'd you get for Y? For Y? Yeah. Um, okay, so what's the square root of 525? Uh, I know. Just use your calculator. What's the square root of 525? Twenty two point nine. Does anyone else get twenty two point nine? Okay. So let's go ahead and fill that part in our on our diagram that this is twenty two point nine over here. And now we're going to look at the top triangle to figure out what x is. So now I'm going to look at this triangle up here. When I look at this triangle up here, um, Lexi, which one now is our c value in the top triangle? 28, right? So across from the right angle is 28. So that's going to be my C value. So I'm going to do A squared plus B squared equals C squared again with our new value that we found.
Ben, what is 22.9 squared? Anybody else get 524.41 for that part? Okay. James, what is 28 squared? Okay, what happens when I take away 524, Charmony? I'm sorry, you have a student that's talking. I can't hear you. Say that again, please. Okay. Amanda, what happens when I take the square root here? You get 16.11. 16.1. 16.1. Anybody else end up with 16.1 overall? Let me see. Raise your hand for me. Looking, looking. Anybody have questions how I got there? How do you guys feel about this? Yeah? Not bad? All right, so Miriam, when are we ever going to use this in real life? Glad you asked. Let's do number 10. Okay, it says draw a picture and then solve for the missing side. So in this lesson, we're doing the Pythagorean theorem. And since we're doing the Pythagorean theorem, what kind of a triangle do I have to have? A right triangle. So when we are drawing these, and drawing these can sometimes be the trickiest part, but when you're drawing these, you're always thinking, how do I get a right triangle? So a roofer leaned a 16-foot ladder against the house. So let's draw a house here. Here's the side of my house. I know. I should be in art school. Okay. A roofer leaned a 16-foot ladder against the house. Tell me this, if you lean your ladder like this, are you going to fall backwards? Mm -hmm. Probably. So a ladder is leaned at a slant, right? Mm -hmm. So the ladder is 16 feet. So we're going to label this as 16 because that's our ladder. If the base of the ladder is 5 feet from the house, so the bottom of the ladder is five feet from the house. So down here is going to be five. How high up on the house does the ladder reach? So we're trying to figure out how much this, is, this over here on the side of the house is. Here's our right angle that we've created. Oftentimes I have students put 16 where X is. But again, you don't put a ladder straight up against a house because you'll fall off. Okay? So, uh, let's go ahead and do our Pythagorean theorem here. I want you to try it out, and I'll let you work for just a minute. Is this 231? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the square root of 231, Brian? 15.2, section 15.1. Okay, 15.2. All right, so uh, because this is a story problem and there are words, that means we write a, write a sentence. Amanda, do you want to help us out and write the first sentence? The hint is to read the last sentence. How high up does the ladder reach? Yeah, the ladder will reach 15.2. Okay. The ladder will reach height of 15.2. Are we talking about inches, meters? What are we talking about here? Feet. 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 On the house.
My expectation is that when you have a word problem, can you please stop throwing your pencil? When you have a word problem, that your answer will be in word form. Okay, so you're going to get a point, like you would get a point here for drawing the picture. You would get a point for setting up the problem correctly. You would get a point for getting X. And you would get a point for writing it in a sentence. So that's four points in that one problem. Okay? So it's worth your time because it's great if you can do math, but if you don't understand the answer that you got, there's no point in doing it. All right? So let's look at number 11. It says, Kurt is building a rectangular deck. So I'm going to pause and I'm just going to draw a rectangular deck. If the dimensions of the deck are 10 feet by 23 feet. So 10 feet by 23 feet. What is the length of a diagonal of the deck? Well, we don't have a diagonal drawn, so I can go ahead and draw one. If you draw it the other way, it's still the same thing. Again, we're looking for a right triangle, and the definition of a rectangle, which we haven't talked about yet, that's next unit, is that there's a right angle in the corner. There's a right angle in every corner of a rectangle. So now we have our triangle. And it says, what's the length of the diagonal? So this is going to be our x value over here. So, Monica, which value is our c value in this diagram? Would be x. Would be x, good. Let's go ahead and set up our equation. Go ahead and pause the video if you're watching. Go ahead and pause, and then you can resume when you have finished your answer. Okay, so we're getting 25.1 for X. Um, Natasha, what's your sentence say? The diagonal of the deck is 25.1 feet, or the length of the diagonal of the deck is 25.1 feet. Or the diagonal is 25.1 feet of the deck. There are multiple ways to say it. Diagonal 25.1, deck in there. All right? Get those words in there. Okay. <coughs> number 12. We're just going to set number 12 up. We're not going to do it, but I want to talk about it. it. says, Ashley jogged 35, or 35 miles. Wowzers. That's like Miss Carolyn. Mm -hmm. By the way, do you guys know that Miss Carolyn has run 367 consecutive days. Oh my gosh. That's over a year. Today is like day two or day three of the new year. <clears throat> Isn't that crazy? Now, granted, some, she's not running like 50 miles a day, but she runs a lot. She does, yes. So go congratulate her when you see her next. Okay. In case you are directionally challenged... Let's go ahead and put up, what is this called? A weather vane, I think? A compass. But it's, what did I say? A weather vane. Yeah, a weather vane. Like you put on the on the top of the house, you know, and the rooster goes around with the wind. Yes. Okay. So, 3.4 miles east. So, we're going to start, and she's going to go 3.4 miles east. That's this direction. So, we're going to label this as 3.4. And then she goes 5.7 miles south. How far is she from her starting point? So again, our goal is to create right triangles this whole time, right? So we can draw a diagonal that's connecting her back to her starting point. Does that make sense there? Mm -hmm. And then that's going to be our X, and we have our right triangle or right angle over here. Okay, and then you guys can solve this. Let's set up number 13. Why don't you read it and see what you can set up? I'm going to pause the video. Okay, so if we start with a telephone pole, the telephone pole is 25 feet. And then it says a 31-foot support wire is attached from the top of the pole to somewhere on the ground. So this is 31. Now, if you flipped it on the other side and you put the 31 slanted side on the other side, that's fine. On the left side, that's okay. How far from the pole's base <coughs> does the wire meet the ground? That pole should have been an apostrophe S there. How far from the pole's base does the wire meet the ground? So 
this is what we're trying to find down here. This is our x. Here's our right angle. This is also acceptable, 25, 31, here. Either one of this, okay? Any questions on that? Let's look at our homework, please. The next page is our homework. <coughs> and you need to do 1 through 14 all. <coughs> 1 through 14 all. <coughs> 